Dark Cast Network, Indie Pods with a Dark Side. Hi, this is Jenna. And this is Kelly. And you're listening to ODFM. This episode is One Dog from Murder. So this is set in January of 2001. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. No, it's not recent, Mm -hmm. but damn, it feels recent. It feels recent. I mean, it's within this era. (laughs) Right. Okay. God, that's sad. All right. It's within this era. This is in a swanky San Francisco apartment building. Oh. Yeah. I mean. Somewhere I can't afford to live. I don't think I could even start to afford (laughs) to live in a tent in San Francisco. So yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, God. So there's this woman, Esther Berkmeyer. Okay. She's 70 something. She's in her apartment. She hears vicious barking down the hallway of her sixth floor apartment. Like it's not like the usual sound, like of an excited dog you know, ready for a walk or wanting I to play. I hope it's a pet friendly building. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. But these do not sound like friendly pets. These are not friendly it's pets. It's not the friendly barking. Okay. So it's obvious that it's more than one dog she can hear and they sound ferocious like it's just that battle sound oh god and she herself she is terribly afraid of dogs because she had an incident as a child so okay that'll do it one incident well that's all it it takes unfortunately i know so she looks out her peephole they have little peepholes Oh, right. She's trying to see down the hall, but she can't really see anything from yeah, her point of see. view. Yeah, yeah. Not side really. to side is hard. Yeah. Yeah, so. it doesn't work. <laughs> they need the people like a periscope. Did she expect the dogs to be like on their hind legs looking back at her or what? <laughs> They're standing out there. Hi. Hi. Yeah. No, um, yeah, she needs a periscope. That is a good yes. invention we'll have to make. The people okay. periscope. The people periscope. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the invention of the ring doorbell just trumped that. I don't Very think that's, true. that's I don't true. think your invention is gonna you take don't think off, that's man. Gonna... I yeah. That's the I mean everything I think you're I about tried. a century too late. <laughs> yeah, but mine doesn't take electricity, so Oh well, there you go. I mean, I guess there's that. So if Armageddon happens, we can make our yeah. All right, there you go. Work. We'll call them the PP, the, the peep, peephole periscope. Great, it'll sell like gangsters with eight year old boys. <laughs> That's all it'll take. <laughs> it's all about the it's all about the PP humor at my house right now. Oh, Wonderful. it still is at mine. They oh, don't God. grow it just to warn you. Yeah, oh, crap. <laughs> so Esther's looking out the peep the PP. She's looking out the peephole, and she hears a voice pleading for help. And mm. she's like, oh, shit. So she's trying to look through the peep hole in the other direction. And she. <laughs> right. <laughs> with, yeah. So she can kind of see a person laying on the ground or what she thinks is a person. Okay. And it, it looks like a woman. But the view, you know, when you look through people, it's kind of fuzzy. It's yeah. Not yeah. It's real. not the best clear. And it's like that. What is it called? Fish eye lens. Yeah. And it's, it's all distorted and stuff. Right. Terrible. So from her view, it looks like there's a dark object on top of the human, oh. but the object doesn't look human and they're just sitting still. And she's like, what the hell is happening? So she calls 911. She tells them, you know, there's this loud barking. I don't know if anyone's hurt, but I and ain't the, opening my door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The operator is like, well, is it an emergency? You know, it's someone hurt. And Esther's like, I don't know. It, it, it sure sounds bad, but right. I don't know. And so the operator's like, well, you should call the local police instead. Hangs up. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. They so, can't connect me? What? Okay. No. Right. So after she hangs up with 911, the barking and growling get closer to her door and something starts slamming against her door. Like, oh, well, now can I call them back now? This is, seems like an emergency. <laughs> yeah. It feels worse now. And it's so bad. It sounds like bodies crashing against her door. And it's so loud and fierce that she's afraid the door's not going to hold like it is shaking oh. the door jam so yeah she calls nine and no, she's like I... okay remember me bitch i need help now <laughs> i think this is real so this time through the phone the operator can hear you know <laughs> shit in the background she's like oh yeah something's happening so she, they dispatch the police 
And while she's on the phone with the operator, Esther, again, she's she's afraid to, but she looks through the people. She sees groceries scattered down the hallway and she's like, what? What happened? So waiting, mm-hmm. she hears a woman's voice yelling, get off. And she recognizes that voice. She's like, oh, this, that's my neighbor, Marjorie. Okay. Marjorie owns two very large, very scary, in Esther's opinion, dogs. Okay. The attack or the fight, it's not letting up at all. It's still, she can hear it down the hall, Jeez. banging around. Seems like it's going on forever. And eventually she hears Marjorie yell, stop it. And suddenly, like the snarling goes quiet. It's just silent out there. And Esther's like, oh God, what's oh happening? God. Do you know what time of day this was? Was it day? Was it night? It was, was midday. It... it was like three-ish. I think. Oh, even weirder. Because like, I mean, it'd be scary in the middle of the night. But Totally. Like, oh, God. This it'd is be very terrifying. weird stuff to happen in the middle of the day. Okay. Absolutely. So police are on the way to the scene. They're totally not sure what they're dealing with. They're like, yeah, we, we respond to a lot of violent situations, but they're humans. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're not really sure what we're going to come upon in this situation animals. So all the information they had was that they were heading to the sixth floor of the swanky apartment building Mm -hmm. with two out of control, ferocious beasts on the loose. And (laughs) now I'm picturing those, those creatures from Ghostbusters. Remember they, they referred to them as dogs. They totally (laughs) sound like those types, like freaky. They're not sure. Like, do we have a victim? We don't know possibly, but maybe there's just these beasts loose. There's a ruckus. Yeah. (laughs) They have to, they the have, general ruckus. Right. Could you describe the ruckus? <laughs> right. um, yeah. No, I cannot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fierce. So they get to the sixth floor. The elevator door opens and there's a woman lying with her head like right outside the opening to the elevator. Like the door opens. There's a head right there. Like, whoa, oh. she's naked. She's laying in a huge pool of blood. Oh, my God. They look down the hall and there is blood splattered up and <gasps> down the hallway. There's bloody handprints on the walls. There's shredded clothing everywhere. And it sounds like, like the shining, less, you know, instead of, oh, wow. Horrifying. Okay. And then there's groceries scattered everywhere, like Esther had seen. They don't know what's happening. So the woman, they look down at the poor victim. She's trying to push herself up and mm-hmm. crawl towards an open oh, apartment door. Oh, my God. They look at the apartment door. There's like keys hanging in the, the doorway. The door okay. is open. She's just trying to get to it. So, they hurry to help her and and keep her still while they're like freaking yeah. out where where are these beasts, you know, looking right. around. They're worried they're gonna come become right the next when they're helping her and yeah, they're not looking attack. up, right? Plus, once you know, animals have already attacked the blood and all that kind of stuff. Everybody gets all riled up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a bigger ruckus. At that moment, a woman with matted, bloody hair, she's looking really crazy. Ugh. She comes out from an apartment down the hall. Her clothing, shoes, hands, even her face is covered in blood. Yeah. And this wild looking woman, she approaches them. The the cops sitting there. She's babbling in a string of sentences. She's like, oh, I just came back from taking my dog on a walk. I was putting her in the apartment and my other dog got loose and attacked the woman down the hall. And she claimed she had tried to get to him. But then her female dog got loose. And by that time, the male dog had the woman by the throat. And they're just like, what? 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 Wait, wait, what? So the cops ask, okay, but so where are these dogs now? (laughs) Yeah. Step one. (laughs) Where are they now? We need to get rid of these dogs. She's like, it's all fine. They're locked away in my apartment. And they're telling her, well, keep the door shut. Don't go open it. And she's like, no, no, I need to get back in that apartment. Like, no, no. So they, yeah. so now they have to focus on her instead of mm-hmm. focusing on the victim because they're like, no, we can't have these dogs. We can't back have out these here. dogs loose again, right? Fortunately, at that time, animal control arrives with more cops, and okay. these cops are able to focus more on the victim. She's covered head to toe in bites and scratches, <sighs> like no inch of her isn't covered. But the most immediate problem, warning. I should have put a warning oh, at boy. the front of this, but yeah, this is pretty gruesome. So if you need to forward through. Yeah, the most immediate problem was the giant chunk out of her neck. (gasps) Her jugular is emptying blood in massive amounts, like not long. She's going to be drained. Somehow she's still conscious. Oh my, oh, that poor woman. Oh, she's breathing. Her pulse is super shallow. I mean, she probably doesn't have much left. Right, doesn't have much time, yeah. 
So they know our, our window's like super short. We've got to get her out. The elevator door opens and paramedics come onto the scene. And right then her pulse stops. Oh, yeah. Right when they get her. And so they're wow. like, ah, oh, shit. So they're working on her. They get her pulse started again, trying to stop the blood flow. Right. Without like crushing her trachea because you can see oh, it all. The, uh, yeah, there's all <laughs> kinds of important things right there. Oh, gosh. Okay. So they rush to get her out of the building. Meanwhile, animal controls down the hall dealing with the owner of the dogs. Mm -hmm. So they ask this crazy looking woman, they're like, can you bring your dogs down to our van so we don't have to enter the apartment, which is their territory? Oh, good. Call. Right okay. after this. Right. I was attack. like, why would you let this woman who already let them out? Right. They're thinking, OK, she knows how to control her dogs, assuming, you know, it's her own. You pets. bring them to us. OK. I mean, right. OK, but all the way through the building. Yeah. A little oh, scary. That seems like a bad idea, but OK. Yeah. And, and well, yeah. And she says, no, no, I can't, no. Handle, I can't handle them. Nope. I, well, I'm so glad you have them. Right. In a public building with lots of people living here. That's fantastic. So responsible. So responsible. She's like, I can only handle the female or one dog at a time. What? <laughs> Who takes out the other dog then? Oh, oh my right. God. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, this is this story is a shit show. This is just like the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> it takes three animal control officers and a number of cops, along with numerous tranquilizer darts to get the dogs out of the apartment. And they are still fighting. Yeah. Oh, my God. And it's one at a time still. Well, yeah, I would imagine. But oh, my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I read something like she had put the mail in the bathroom and locked them in there and he's pacing back and forth. And then they God. put the female in a bedroom and she's like bouncing off the walls, like hitting the walls. Oh, my God. So they're like, what is what are these demons? Jesus. Oh, all I'm picturing is like I keep seeing um, previews and commercials for that movie Cocaine Bear. Yes. That's all. Yes. <laughs> That's what's in my head right now. Totally. Which, by the way, I can't believe that that is based on a true story. I'm like, okay, this has to be like just one of those weird, bizarre right. horror movies, like, like snakes on a plane. Yeah. Oh, could never happen. Yes. Yeah. So stupid. But yeah, no. Oh, we almost watched it last night, but it said as its description, thriller slash erotic. And yeah. so I know. So what? the boys were like, never mind. Yeah. Not with our parents in the room. <laughs> exactly. No. Riley's oh, like, I'll gross. watch this on my own. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I like, get it. Get it. How the what? I Erotic. I know. I was like, I nope. don't. How is that? That whatever. bothers me even more that my daughter has said that other kids in her school have already seen it and talk <gasps> about it. Seriously? So we're talking about seventh graders here. Shit. That's fantastic. Well, I'm like, did they get that wrong? Like, is what's I don't know. I guess yeah. I'll, is I'll find out when we watch it. <laughs> Tell me that's a typo. Maybe they meant neurotic. Yeah. yeah that okay. Way, that, that makes, that more, makes sense. more sense. <laughs> So two detectives who deal with all the city's most hardcore violent crimes, like shootings, stabbings, gangs, all that kind of shit. Right. They're called. <laughs> we need you to come in because we got some dogs. <laughs> no. One's so, a Jack Russell. No. <laughs> Sorry. The other's a Chihuahua. Good right. luck. <laughs> Bring your SWAT gear. They're ferocious. I mean, some of those chihuahuas, man. Again, I've, yeah. I've been bit by a couple. I've, yeah, I've met some very sweet ones, but yes, I have been I have very too. badly bit because mm -hmm. I, I used to work as a pet nurse. Well, see, you on know. weekends, and some oh. have very serious little man syndrome. Yeah, oh, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I have nightmares. Okay, Let's see, okay. they're frightening. They're being told these investigators. They're being told, you know, you're coming to investigate a dog attack in the well-to-do Pacific Heights apartment building, and they're like. What? Why? Why are you calling us? Yeah. Why are you calling us? Our... We don't do this. But they're like, all right, well, we've been assigned it. So they go to the scene on the sixth floor. And once the those elevator doors open, they realize, oh, yeah, there's a lot more to this story. So <laughs> blood up and down the hallway. Yeah, something bad <sighs> happened. Their first order of business is to talk with the dog owner, that crazy freaking crazy, lady. crazy, bloody hair lady. Yeah. Okay. So when they approach her, she's like, yeah, my name is Marjorie Noller. And by this time, she's very annoyed. She's like, I've already talked to the cops and I really don't feel like talking to anyone right now. I, I'm missing my stories. Uh, yeah. General <laughs> Hospital is on and <laughs> someone just got mauled like right. badly. What? Marjorie, she's claiming, you know, it's all an accident, but 
these guys are like, well, there's a strong chance this victim's not going to live through these injuries. Right. Yeah. So there's a chance the dog owners might have charges brought against them. So they have to investigate anyway. At this point, though, they're not treating it as a homicide because the woman, the victim's still alive. Right. Okay. These detectives, they're highly skilled at getting people to talk. What I was reading about these guys is they are really good, smooth talkers, which you need in a detective. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So they're trying to get Marjorie to let them into her apartment to talk about everything. And they almost have her convinced that they too think, you know, it's probably an accident, just a tragic, Mm -hmm. terrible accident. But we need to to get in and talk to you and and get more details. So right, and maybe check out the scene. Yeah. Like how how do you have these animals? Are they exactly we kind of need to know a little more. But right then her husband Robert Noel shows up. Robert He'd been trying to get a hold of Marjorie on his way home, but she hadn't been answering. And he just had this gut feeling something's like wrong. Mm -hmm. When he had gotten to the building, he saw the emergency vehicles all around. And then he saw them like pulling his prized guard dog. Bane Mm -hmm. is his name. Bane, Mm B-A-N-E. Like the bane of your existence type of thing. Mm -hmm. But wasn't there a, isn't there like a superhero villain named Bane? I wouldn't doubt it. It's pretty I can't remember evil sounding which, name. Yeah, right. Okay. These animal control guys yeah. wrangling his prize dog out. So he's like, oh, something happened. So he makes his way into the building. He hears people, authorities talking about the bloody dog attack. Oh god. And he assumes the victim's Marjorie. Oh. So he, he's pretty freaked out. So both Robert and Marjorie, they're defense attorneys. And they are very suspicious of law enforcement because they have been fighting against what they believed was a corrupt justice system. Okay. Oh, God. They had been under surveillance and harassed by law enforcement for years, and their apartment had been raided numerous times. For Do you know what for? Uh, Or are we going to get to that? We'll kind of get to it. Most of it was... Because they were trying to prove that uh, the jail systems and things there were corrupt and people were being paid off to do, the, you know, OK, pretty general government stuff. OK. All right. So, OK. So they felt like they were had this, nothing to do with the dogs, nothing to do with the dogs. OK. But they felt like maybe this was another ploy to pin something on them w- with their fight against the corruption. Like, like. He, OK. But their dogs got out. Like, I don't. <laughs> OK. Whatever. Right. Exactly. This is. These people are a little strange, as you'll hear. Okay, All right. And they do when he gets there, he does agree to let the cops inside to look Marjorie or because she's covered in blood and they want to check her for injuries. You know, they're like, was this just whose blood is it? (laughs) Is it yours? Are you bleeding? And she had a small bruise above her eye and some light bites on her hands. Nothing punctured, though. Okay. And then when they did check her over, none of her injuries were bad enough, even for a bandage. Oh, so she's fine. So once again, they ask her, Okay. Tell us your story. We need more information about these dogs, too. Yeah. Yeah. So these dogs are a type I had. Where never did you get them? Of. The gates of hell? Like, yeah, where did they come from? And I'm a I am a mm-hmm. dog person. And right, right now I'm having a real hard time. These <laughs> are horrifying. And I'm a dog person, too. I love freaking all animals. But these right. guys. So this is the sounds of them. Not good. So they're a type I've never heard of. They're called Presa Canarios. Canarios. I have never heard of that. They came from the Canary Islands. These, okay. they look like giant pit bulls, just with oh. longer ears, but ginormous. They're super oh. muscular. Okay. But a lot of people, they dock their ears to make them look like pit bulls. Gotcha. And they're actually a type of mastiff. So if that gives you size. Okay, those are also big. That's massive. like like a mastiff was the dog in like Turner and Hooch. Yeah, and Cujo. Right. And Cu- Oh, and Cujo. Right, right. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, it's yeah, a huge dog. Huge ass dogs. Big. They're strong. They're not like inherently evil. No, mastiffs usually are really sweet. But right. At, same with pit bulls. With right. Pit bulls are, are. They used to be nanny dogs. They used to be considered nanny dogs. Right. So Super sweet. You know, it's the humans that suck. Yes. Exactly. Right. So, and obviously, these humans suck. Mm-hmm. So. They do. <laughs> these pressas are typically. Range from like 100 to 150 pounds each. They're oh, big, God. big dogs. Why don't you just have a baby tiger in your house? Right. Let's just have a wild <laughs> beast. 
that you can't possibly control because it's weighs more than you. Oh, my God. Okay. And they were originally bred as attack dogs, like f- dog fighting <sighs> dogs. Right. Which, again, is not the dog's fault. That's because of. Yeah. So humans. they were bred for this. Yeah. And the Canary Islands even outlawed these kind of dogs there because dog fighting had gotten so bad on those islands. Oh, they got boy. rid of. So they are not even allowed on these islands. So oh, bring them to an apartment building. Yeah. yeah small apartment <laughs> building in the middle of a city. Great. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent idea. Yeah. Well, so Marjorie's, she's like, well, well, they easily get away from me because, you know, they're strong and massive. So <laughs> this swanky apartment building, it doesn't have any like clauses like as like, hey, the dogs that you have have to be under 50 pounds or I don't know, um, non-killer or... <laughs> trained it probably or, did but uh you know. wait till you learn more about these people to see oh, why they were allowed God. okay so marjorie says when bane had erupted out of her apartment she was screaming at him trying to control him but he pushed his way into the victim's apartment and knocked her down she said um at one point she ran over and threw her body on top of the victims to try to protect her knowing the dog wouldn't attack her Oh, my God. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she said every time she would try to get up to help the victim move, Bane would attack again. Oh, God. Okay. She kind of had to lay on her. But by that point, the female dog that she had been putting in the apartment got loose. And her name is Hera. So Hera gets in the mix. But she says, well, she was not biting or attacking the victim, but she's pulling at the pant cuff. What the pant? So, so the victim, the victim's pant cuffs. She had been dressed. I was going to say at some point had clothing mm-hmm. on. She hadn't left her apartment naked. Nope. Okay. Nope. She had been fully dressed. So Marjorie claims that the dogs are usually, they're so friendly. People love them. I can't mm-hmm. understand what caused this mm-hmm. massive attack. It was weird to the cops because Marjorie is super calm. She's unconcerned about telling your story. It's like, you yeah, know, I did my part. Nothing <laughs> more I can do. I tried to lay on the victim. Did did what I could. Sorry. She didn't even say something. sorry. So. Wow. so they wonder, you know, why isn't Marjorie more injured if she had tried to get herself in between an attack? I mean, if you have ever seen a dog attack, you do not get in the middle of it. I mean, it is. Right, right. You don't. Yeah. And they don't seem to pay attention to who is grabbing them. That's yeah, that's true. That's what I was thinking. Right. I put my body in there because it wouldn't bite me. Well, if it's if. Mm-hmm. If it's an attack mode. An animal. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah. Okay. They're also struck by how much blood she had all over herself, especially her face and why she hadn't tried to wipe it away or anything because it was just crusted and bloody and it was weird. It was odd enough that they wondered yeah. if maybe she purposely put it on there. But just Gross. Yeah. Police now they find out who the victim is. She's this beautiful 33-year-old Diane Whipple. She's the head coach of the women's lacrosse team at St. Mary's College. She's a dedicated athlete. She was a former member of the U.S. lacrosse team, and she had been a member of the World Cup lacrosse team. I mean, this is oh my like gosh. an accomplished so this is, woman. This is an accomplished woman, but that also means that she was an athlete. Yes. Very right. So mm-hmm. we're not talking about like a model waif who has no, yeah. no muscle tone, who can't defend herself or. Right. OK, but it gives you an idea that this woman can probably. Yeah, she could probably hold her own. herself mm-hmm. to a certain extent. So that shows how vicious this would have been. Right. And at one time she had even been chosen as the NCAA's female athlete of the year while she was at Penn State. Wow. Amazing. Okay. She even trained with the U.S. Olympic team. And though she didn't quite qualify, she got super close. I mean, even to get to that point is insane. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So it, that's when she met her partner, Sharon Smith, who's a pretty brunette and who is now training to become a branch manager of a Sh- Charles Schwab in San Francisco. So they're okay. doing well together. I mean, okay. Yeah. Sharon was considered the more serious of the couple, while Diane was the more goofy one. Diane was the victim. Yes. Okay. Right. So when they began dating, they quickly became inseparable. And by this point, they had been living together for like seven years. Oh, okay. So on this awful day of the dog attack, Diane had called Sharon at work asking her, hey, could you come home early? Because I'm planning a little dinner for us. And then we're going to go out to a movie date. Oh, 
I know. So Sharon's like, sure, let me get it, get out of this place. So she gets to their apartment around 445. And she's like, why is it so hard to get to the building? There's cars everywhere, cop cars, media vans. Oh God. Okay. So when she walks up to the crime scene tape outside the building, the building manager runs over to her and grabs her and says, I Diane has been attacked by dog. She's now in the hospital. Oh God. Shit show. So Diane, she had loved all animals. She's terrified of those dogs though. So much so that it almost felt like to her, it was just a matter of time until something like that would happen. Oh God. Okay. Diane and Sharon had kind of jokingly called the dogs, the dogs of death. Oh, oh boy. And when Diane would go to leave her apartment, she would open the door just a crack to look for any signs of them before leaving her apartment. This is how That's scared she was. Suck. That's this is where you live. Right. And you can't so they'd be afraid going into the building and leaving the building because <sighs> there's the small hallway, you know, there you always yeah. meet up with people. Uh and even I know I had read she had once actually gotten bit by one of them on the hand before. Sharon, after she hears the news, she rushes to the hospital where she's informed of Diane's critical condition. A surgeon had spent almost two hours trying to repair arteries and veins in the neck. You know, oh, oh yeah. some of them are so deep. They had to put a tube in her throat to keep her trachea from collapsing. Wow. Like, wow. Ugh, like rebuilding something without the something yeah, there anymore, this, you know. Yeah. But Diane, she lives through the surgery, but it was just long enough for Sharon to go see her and say goodbye. Oh, God, that's heartbreaking. You know? She then passes away and Sharon felt like, you know, Diane just held on until she could say goodbye to her. God. I know. Yeah. Torture. And the medical examiner said Diane's death wasn't in his mind an accident. He had counted 77 lacerations, bruises, (gasps) bites, and scratches over every part of her body. Was she wearing bacon lotion? What (laughs) made her so appealing? What the hell? I can't. (gasps) I mean, it was not bitty. It was not like they bite her once and killed her. It was right. Or like her a entire um, body, like a dog that got spooked and, and retaliated. This was like a, this was, I'm a, going to kill you. Assault. And yeah. You. <sighs> so the cause of death was loss of blood, obviously from multiple dog bites. The wounds were so deep and extensive that it was impossible to say if it was just a single dog attack or by two, because it was oh, just, gosh everywhere right. well and then the same type of dog it's not like right testing to see if it came from two different guns a bullet right or whatever right? It's how not, do you yeah. tell yeah. so the male dog bane he's euthanized immediately oh god i know which is heartbreaking it's, but it's heartbreaking but at the same time like i i, I would that, if it was my dog safety issue you have to i mean but yeah you can't trust that dog in public anymore, but anim- animal control, they're holding Hera to wait for the decision that would come from a vicious and dangerous dog hearing because Marjorie had said Hera had nothing to do with it, you know. Right. Okay. <sighs> oh, many neighbors, they began talking about how they wished they had reported the dogs prior to the attack because so many of them had been in fear of them for a while now. <laughs> if they had all gotten together. Right. And said something. And said so something. they're all feeling horrible about it. But they begin coming forward to tell about their bad experience with the dogs as well as Marjorie and Robert. Because obviously oh. the dogs aren't the biggest part of the problem. So Right, exactly. A vet who had examined the dogs prior to the incident had told them, Marjorie and Robert, that the dogs are not fit to live in a house or an apartment that they're just too large and aggressive and they would be a liability. Basically telling them these dogs are dangerous and they are likely to cause bodily so harm to they've somebody. they've been warned. Mm-hmm. People. So several people had claimed their own dogs had been attacked by the presses while at dog parks. They took them to they dog parks? They took them to dog parks off leash. Let them go. <gasps> oh, they took them to off leash parks. Oh my God. That. So when the dogs would attack another dog, the like other dog owner would step in and grab, you know, stop yeah. it. But Marjorie and Robert would just stand back and watch kind of like and <gasps> laughing sometimes laughing like, oh, that's so cute. What? Uh, oh, can we euthanize these people? Yeah. Like, I really don't like them. I, I really, know. They're the oh ones that God. need to go. They are. <sighs> so when the same thing happened to a dog trainer, like a dog trainer with his own dogs, 
in an encounter with Bane and Hera, he's able to get Hera to release the neck of another dog by that kind of pinching oh, yes. motion you do on their their um, jaws. Yeah. But it took minutes because <gasps> this dog is so strong. And oh. I mean, this is a trainer who deals with every kind of dog. And so he's telling them, you have to get these dogs trains or something tragic is going to happen. You are irresponsible. And you can't this. bring them to public places. This is... And, you know, they just blow them off and they're like, whatever. Don't say anything. Don't apologize ever. Oh, my God. Do I not like these people? Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. They're awful people. So Marjorie and Robert, they have a pretty rough reputation by this time. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they had a bad reputation before the dogs. So if they had a problem with anyone, they're really quick to file lawsuits because they're those defense attorneys. <laughs> they're defense attorneys and they yeah. know how to do it. And they don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. They can just they do had, it. They don't have to pay somebody oh, to do it for, for them. Oh, for sure. And the building manager had been the victim of many of their lawsuits. So <laughs> this results in everyone being afraid to speak up against them for anything. Oh, Jesus. So this power couple, you know, they, they have all the power yeah. in the world. So that's why they are allowed to have the dogs in oh my God. the apartment. Because they knew uh, we try to say anything, they're going to take all our money. Wow. Wow. Great. So when people showed a bit of uneasiness or fear around their dogs, Marjorie would laugh. She thought it was hilarious. Like, (laughs) yeah, my dog is so powerful. It turns out that no one in the building felt comfortable coming and going as soon as the dogs arrived. Like the whole feeling of the apartment building changed. Everyone's on edge. It's like having freaking, yeah, like lions in your. She sounds like a Disney villain. She's like like Cruella de Vil. God. Oh, she's awful. With the wild hair. Yeah. And the evil dogs. Uh, and her laugh. <laughs> right. Exactly. After Diane's death, prosecutors wanted to bring felony charges against the couple. Oh, but wow. they had to be able to prove that Marjorie and Robert knew the dog's proclivity to kill. Like, gotcha. OK. They had to prove that they, they were knew. being. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And being irresponsible. So during yes. their investigations, a really weird piece of information came across their desk like this is weird enough but okay this gets deeper so the dogs bane and hera they're actually the property of two oh it's supposed to say white supremacists but i put shite supremacists so that's <laughs> <laughs> very fitting they don't belong to them they belong to they belong to these white supremacists that are currently in prison uh, mm. Wow. Weird. So this makes the case against Marjorie and Robert a little bit stickier because they're not the owners. So now the investigators, they're like, okay, now we got to look into who they claim the owners are. (laughs) Okay. These guys. So one of the two men who claim to be the dog owners, his name is Paul Schneider, who goes by corn fed. (laughs) That's a terrifying name. Good good job. Corn fed. Corn fed. Okay. But, yeah. His name actually strikes terror in anyone who knows him, especially the other inmates. So, oh, okay. Corn fed, as we'll refer to him because it's funny. He was serving three life sentences for a long list of felonies, and he <gasps> is known as the Pelican Bay Prison's Hannibal Lecter. Oh, my God. Corn fed story. Like, we could do a whole episode on him because it oh, is boy. wild. But to give you an idea of some of the depravity of this guy, here's a couple of things he's done. And so he was charged with the killings of two dozen people. <gasps> two dozen? Oh, my two gosh. Dozen. Uh, doing crazy shit. Like he he was headed to trial. So the two dozen people is because he he would get the Aryan Brotherhood to do hits on people. OK, OK. So like one time he was headed to trial for a charge before. Which before when he went there, he made a shiv and I think they said it was out of a, a soup ladle. OK, he he puts it up his ass oh, before court while in the court Careful room, with that. Right. Ouch. Sharp. <laughs> oh, while in the courtroom, somehow he retrieves it. How? Don't know how. No one knows that he's picking something out of his ass in the middle uh, of court. <laughs> how, how he what? did it. I don't know how God, he did that it. guy's got a wedge. He's yeah. got like a his serious ass. wedgie. What? The, are you serious? OK. Yep. He pulls it out. He attacks his defense attorney <gasps> with it. Oh, my God. Yeah. So he gets he gets uh, charged with a second life sentence for that. 
Yeah, action. that makes it really hard for him to look innocent mm-hmm. in the initial case he's in. If you kill somebody in the middle of your court case. I mean, <laughs> especially your own defense attorney. I, I right? just I mean, might not be a good well, way to go. I think this trial's over. Yep. Now he gets another life sentence. It was funny. The way they figured out how he had the shiv up his ass was they tested the wounds on the defense attorney and it had fecal matter. In it. Oh, my God. So that is how because they were like, how did this oh. guy get the shiv into the courtroom? Yep. Oh from his asshole. God. Oh, that my God. Ugh. And another one. Oh, this guy is so vile. This is why he is Hannibal Lecterish. OK, so he had a deep wound in one of his legs okay. and he kept it that way by hiding objects in it like cool. shivs and shit and would oh. bandage them in there oh. so that he could kill other people at a moment's notice. Yeah. I like oh. this wound had been there like 15 years because he just keeps <gasps> shoving shit in it. It's just this seeping. Oh, he's obviously lesion. like not of this world because he should have oh, died. My God. That should have killed him. Like so, one of those things should have infected yeah. him and died. And the crazy thing also like Hannibal Lecter, he's crazy smart. Like this guy is <gasps> very good at manipulating people. Very smart, very charming, which mm. why corn fed. But anyway, and Andy was a pet owner. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so he's a high ranking Aryan Brotherhood member who could and often did have people in and out of prison killed with the wave of his hand. Like, so to say he's feared is like an understatement, even amongst the most brutal inmates. They say his name and they're like, no, I'm not fucking with that guy. You know, (laughs) wow, I will be dead. Marjorie and Robert, they had grown close to corn fed because they had represented him. Oh, oh my God. They, yeah. They could have been stabbed with a poop color covered shit. Like what? Oh, and but then, they didn't get just close. They grew like grossly close to him over the years. What had started as a working relationship became more. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It gets weird. So Marjorie and Cornfed, they begin sharing sexually explicit letters between each other. And Robert's totally good with it. It's like, nope. yeah, go for it. Mm-hmm. Nope. 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 Yeah. That's a whole lot of nope. <laughs> it's a whole so many nopes. So Marjorie's fantasy sexual letters would involve both the men. And Robert would send fully nude photos of Marjorie to Cornfed. And they would get these through all the security because it was attorney client relationship oh, so so the security oh. wouldn't open the letters yeah even worse sometimes some of the sexual pictures oh involved the dogs <gasps> yeah uh, no wonder they're grumpy i yeah. mean honestly i oh Seriously, they're being raped and shit I'm, I'm starting to feel bad for the dogs now oh, i know God. okay so corn fed he's he's like fancies himself an artist and he, he would <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I fancy myself an artist. So he would make all these weird mythological drawings like himself with with swords and big tough guy and and Robert and Marjorie in the pictures too in in what he called a triad. And Cornfed called Marjorie the men's tigress. Like she's our tigress. Oh my God, just stop. And she's not a cute woman. Just just saying. And neither well, none of them. Oh my God. While they had this relationship, he had talked the pair into taking these giant dogs because he and his cellmate decided to start a attack dog breeding business. And they're trying oh, to get this off the no. ground. These dogs mm-hmm. are not fixed. No, no, no. Oh, God. No. Okay. In okay. fact, they have, they've already had several babies by no, this point. No, make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. Demon baby dogs. Oh, God. Yep. Yeah. There was a whole, I, I read an entire book about this and there was... Oh, this poor woman who bred them. It was a nightmare. So anyway, these types of dogs are often sold to guard meth labs, some of which are controlled by the Mexican cartels. So this is. Can, can we get any worse? No, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, seriously, let's just this... bring in some more groups that are just. Oh, my no, God. It's <laughs> terrifying. So please believe the dogs are being used as weapons and gangs to kill people like they were the ones that are trained when the police try to raid places these dogs are set off on them and type of things yeah oh, it's God. terrifying in their cell in these men's cell authorities find letters and plans about the dog breeding scheme so they know 
oh, these God. guys are in on it. And so when it looked like they, like Marjorie and Robert might get in trouble for having the dogs or that maybe corn fed might, <laughs> I mean, it gets better. Just Marjorie and Robert write corn fed with uh, big news. They, they want to make a lifelong commitment to him. Um, what? Mm-hmm. They found a way to marry him oh my God. in a legal way through, <laughs> through adoption. They adopt the 39 year old. I'm corn sorry. Fed what? As their son. What? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> as a way to marry him, they adopted him. Yeah. This is some weird messed up. It is hillbilly shit right here. I can't. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. So weird. Okay. Two prosecutors are assigned to the case, one of which is Kimberly Guilfoyle, who you might recognize as Donald Trump Jr.'s fiance and MAGA proponent. Oh, God. But at this time, oh, get this, though. I didn't know this. She was the fiance to the Democrat and now California Governor Gavin Newsom at this time. She had been his what? wife for a while. Oh, Wait, she what? swapped sides. Oh, my God. OK. She was also a former Victoria's Secret model. Which that's why Donald <laughs> Trump Jr. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So she constantly drew attention due to her beauty and all that. So she's kind of the she's new at this job. She's new. <laughs> and there's another guy that's <laughs> new. That's kind of really good at the I was job. Like, that, how did she draw the short stick here? She's new. Yeah, there you she's go. new. It's, mm-hmm. She's the new yeah. new new the job. But they they have this amazing attorney with her working with her and he's really, really good. So, okay. And I think she was pretty good too. Robert and Marjorie are hitting the news waves with all manner of their own conspiracy theories about oh, the mauling God. and trying to deflect blame off of themselves. So they try to claim that Diane might've been wearing a perfume that had pheromones that could <laughs> set the dogs off. Do- dog pheromones. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's hot now. Yeah. And and trying to say it was turning bane on. I mean, it was... So- Bizarre. Do- yeah, no. Dog fair. Uh-huh. Was there also something in there about the fact that she may have taken a bacon bath that right. day or something? I mean, what else? I mean, Come so on. stupid. And the other thing they were like, oh, they heard she's an athlete. So they're like, oh, she was probably taking steroids. So the dogs were, you know, into the steroid stuff. And all of that what? is proven what? untrue. I, so, I, I, yeah, just trying to and, and victim blame. It's just gross. Right. Anything to make her sound tastier, I, I guess. Know, is, is, I mean, what? what? In freaking sane. <sighs> Robert, he even had a TV crew into his place for an interview because he claimed the cops had ransacked their place and he wanted to show the world the injustice. Oh, OK. On the footage of the interview, you could see a book on the table called Man Stopper with an exclamation point. Oh, man Stopper. Man Stopper. OK, OK. okay. It had a photo of Bane superimposed on the cover, which is weird. And okay. it's a training guide for guard dogs. And it seemed to be Robert's attempt at trying to say, look at how sloppy the police were. They didn't even p- take this book that obviously shows guard dogs. It's not bizarre. <laughs> what? What? Like they had searched the place for evidence, but had forgot, didn't take the book. I've, like, But didn't, this is like, this is months after. It, it's a while so, after, maybe a week after, something like that. Right. But and they it, couldn't have brought new evidence in. Right. Or ransacked their own place. By this exactly. Time. Okay. Yeah. It does turn out okay. that Robert had actually planted it for that exact purpose. But <laughs> turns it out that it becomes a key piece of evidence showing that they were indeed breeding dogs for the purpose of fighting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. totally. You're not so smart, I mean, are you, asshole? <laughs> I mean, so stupid. Why would you do that? So they also found evidence on the couple's computer That the couple knew what the dogs were being raised for. They tried to contest the info for being released as saying it's like attorney client privilege. You can't read that stuff. It's between us and our client. But the judge is like, nope, this doesn't apply. I'm sorry. Bestiality and stuff. Nope. It's coming out. Oh, okay, good. Marjorie, in an interview, she had said that she had done everything humanly possible to try to stop the attack on Diane. She was quoted as saying, I wouldn't say it was an attack. Bain was just overly interested in Mrs. Whipple. Uh, how, how many bite marks were there? Overly interested. She He wasn't sniffing her crotch. What the no. fuck? Uh, uh. <laughs> and the interviewer is like, well, Diane Whipple was bald to death. The woman is dead. Like Overly <laughs> interested? Overly interested? Right. So to which Marjorie tried to claim that Diane had struck her with a fist above her right eye. And that's when Bain went from 
overly interested to him wanting to bite her. You know how she had so, that small little bruise. Right. So the dog, so the male dog uh, was humping the neighbor's leg and that pissed her off. And so she hit the owner of the dog and right. the dog went and the dog attacked. This is something the like we're that. going with. Okay. All right, cool. I just want to make sure I got that. Just keeps changing. Then the vicious dog hearing comes around to decide Hera's fate. Oh, right, right. The witnesses come forward to speak about Hera's frightening behaviors and the, the fights they had witnessed, not just between Bane, but Hera too. So Marjorie and Rob, Robert, they're at this trial and they're acting on dramatic, sighing and rolling their eyes like, ah, can you believe these people? Officials also reported that during the hearing that Hera had blood all over her after the attack on Diane, proving that she's not just a bystander in the attack. She's she's pretty close. Yeah. Where did where did that come from? Huh? Plus, she had pieces of Diane's clothing in her feces. OK, that's pretty hard to. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, mean, obviously, she was part of tearing the clothing off her. So and she ate it. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, that's that's not I don't. That's not circumstantial evidence, right? No. You can't consider this, that. <laughs> I mean, we she was there. She was obviously involved. Mm -hmm. So a postman testified that he was delivering mail. The poor postman. I mean, they're always oh my God. dogs are always <laughs> after these poor people. <laughs> so he's delivering delivering mail in the neighborhood when Bane and Hera off leash, just walking around off leash. They come charging at him like <gasps> you see these beasts coming at you. He had to use his mail cart to fight them off. Oh, my God. So he's trying to keep that in between them. And when they suddenly stop their attack, it's like a switch okay. was pushed. He looks around. And he sees Marjorie and Robert just standing by a car watching, not yelling commands, <gasps> not trying to control the dogs at all. Just bizarre. What is wrong with these people? Yeah. In all, 30 incidents were presented <gasps> at the vicious dog hearing. <laughs> wow. Okay. So a week after the hearing, it's determined that Hera's unsafe and she's set to be euthanized as well. I, I, I can't believe I mean, it took 30 incidents. <laughs> no. Like, oh my wow. God. So the state brought forth a grand jury to determine whether Marjorie and Robert should be charged in the death of Diane. And the two attorneys decide to represent themselves. Oh, God. <laughs> Which, you know, Please. any attorney Dig with half a brain would never do. Right. right. Yeah. Dig your own Go home. for it. Please. Go for it. They're eager to talk about their wonderful dogs and present them in a light that they thought the jury hadn't seen yet. Robert even prepares this beautiful poster of happy photos of the dogs playing and walking the streets of San Francisco. Oh, great. Uh, but what the couple wasn't aware of before they were were interviewed oh, all these 30 incidents of people had come forward to talk to the grand jury to speak at, about their terrible experiences with the dogs and the proceedings go on for weeks and at oh the end gosh. the prosecutor i mean it was wild the shit that happened during it but the prosecutors reveal the allegations would include forms of homicide from involuntary manslaughter to murder Along with a mischievous dog statute violation. <laughs> which, oh mischievous. That's, that <laughs> sounds that nice? very mild. <laughs> You're so mischievous. Like you stole a piece of bacon from somebody's plate. But no, I, it's right. a, a little worse than that. <laughs> and there were several incidences where the two were caught in lies. But what made it really spicy was when the prosecutors brought out the evidence of their weird relationship with corn fed. Oh, God. Along with the bestiality mentions in the letters they wrote to him. Oh, that all came out. Oh, my. In the letters, there was even a time when he, when Robert had mentioned Diane, the victim, not uh -huh. calling her by name, but mentioning how obviously afraid of the dog she was and that he didn't want to do anything to alleviate those fears. So this is before the woman died and yeah. he knew that she he was afraid. knew how afraid she was. And he had even mentioned it to Cornfed, thinking it That's was hilarious. like, I don't know if it's considered premeditated, but I know. pre mm -hmm. aware of the obviously right. aware of an issue. Obviously problem. So in an affidavit from San Francisco's DA's office, an investigator talked about how one of their witnesses in the case was in the federal witness protection program. Oh, because she was being stalked at her house. Oh, her car had been messed with oh. and her daughter had been chased down by a man in his car following her several times. And they believe this man to be affiliated with the Aryan Brotherhood. Like, oh, my God. 
this corn fed shit is not okay. It's It's not small potatoes. Not small potatoes. The grand jury heard loads of damning testimony. Oh my gosh. And they indicted the two for the fatal dog mauling of Diane Whipple. God. So they are charged with involuntary manslaughter and second degree murder. By this point, though, like they as soon as as the jury stuff was over, they took off. <laughs> but they're such good lawyers. And it didn't work. No. So they knew they knew it wasn't going good. So they headed north and the police believe the couple were planning to flee to Canada, but they caught up with them oh, and, and uh, arrested them. Took him into custody. In the end, Marjorie Noller was found guilty of murder in the second degree. I did. Robert Noll was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Both of them were also found guilty of keeping violent and dangerous dogs. Good. Robert ended up serving four years for the involuntary manslaughter. I'm, I'm sorry, that's it. Four mm-hmm. four years. Four years. Four. But but they were also like he had already what well, am oh, I trying to say? Time with served. Time served. Okay. Barely anything. Still. As for Marjorie, the judge felt the verdict was too harsh. And she threw out the second degree murder for the <gasps> conviction, saying the evidence didn't show Marjorie had acted with malice of forethought. Tell you what, before you decide that, why don't you go hang out in a room with that dog for an hour and then come back and decide. And then find out. Yeah. So she reduced the conviction to involuntary man- manslaughter, meaning she would only serve four years in prison. And both she and Robert would be eligible for parole in just 14 months. She was let out of prison early, like briefly in the early 2000s. But another judge was like, Mm-mm-mm. Oh, good. And reinstated the second degree murder conviction in 2018. And <gasps> she was sentenced to 15 years. So, oh, yes. God. OK, good. She's still in there. Robert Knoll got the two and a half years and then he died in 2018. So neither one of them have any more pets. <laughs> Right. Because that's really my concern right now. Like, oh, God. No, that's the kid. Lover person. Gross. I know. Isn't this wild? But the case was the first time in California history that a dog owner was convicted for murder in a dog mauling case. Um, As far as I saw, I think Marjorie's still in jail. She keeps getting denied parole. She's a little wackadoo. Mm -hmm. As for Diane's partner, Sharon Smith, she filed a wrongful death lawsuit against Marjorie and Robert, and she was Good. awarded $1.5 million in damages. Good. And that was a landmark case because it was the first which a domestic partner was permitted to sue for their loved one's demise. Oh, OK. Something that was previously restricted to just spouses. I see. OK. As reported in the CrimeWire.com. So well, that's, that's, I mean, that's good. That's a, that's a good thing, but yes. holy cow. <sighs> yeah. They need to be banned for life from ever owning as much as a gerbil. I'm sorry. Uh, no. Like seriously, it would be a ferocious, not gerbil. a goldfish. No. <laughs> ah, goldfish. I don't trust them. That's a great, great story. <sighs> I hope it took you holy out of your cow. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, you got me totally out of my hair space. That was beautiful. Yeah, that's great. I'll do that instead. That's cool. Yeah. Have nightmares about dogs. Okay. All right. What, what are your like sources? Your sources? Yes. Yeah. So the crimewire.com, sfgate.com, melmagazine.com, Wikipedia, of course. Mm, oh, yes. And the book I read, it's by Aphrodite Jones. I'm sure you oh. know who she is because she's on yes. a lot of tr- true crime. The book is called Red Zone, the behind the scenes story of the San Francisco dog mauling. Wow. It was really well written. So thank you. That was great. Thanks, everybody. Creepy. Thank you for enjoying another creepy ass story. <laughs> Go kiss your pets and go to sleep. <laughs> and train and neuter your dogs. Thank you very much. Yes. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's our PSA. All right. Well, we'll see you <sighs> next week. Bye. <laughs> hey, Audis. Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM. If you're a longtime listener, hey, we cannot thank you enough for your continued support. And if you're a new listener, thanks for giving us a try. If you like us, please drop us a like, subscribe, or rate us so we can share our stories with more people around the world. And if you'd like more information, like links to our podcast and socials, along with our Patreon fan page, those links are all on Linktree under ODFM Podcast. That's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash ODFM Podcast. Side note. You guys, we're obsessed with fan art and we love making things with it, like stickers for our fans. So if you'd like us to use your designs, send it to us at odfmpodcast at gmail.com. And if we use your design, we'll be sure to send you a sticker. 
Thanks for listening to another episode of ODFM, hosted by Kelly DeVries and Jenna Swanson. Production and editing by Kelly DeVries. Theme music by Eric Swanson. ODFM is a satirical true crime podcast for entertainment purposes only. The stories you hear are serious and true. The comments and opinions are not. We apologize if any of our content is harmful or disrespectful. 